All right, class. Hi. Welcome this morning. Thank you for attending this morning. My name is Susan Hyatt. Um, I am a student at Liberty University in the Doctor of Education program with my focus in community care and counseling. Now the presentation today that we're going to do that I'm going to present is Reality Therapy Choice Theory. We're going to be developing a self-evaluation tool to promote positive change. Now, how would you like to help clients change their thinking in order to produce healthier behavior and in the process create and develop a therapy tool to add to your personal counseling toolbox? Now the learning objectives uh, this morning, after this lesson, the student will be able, and you are the students, identify questions that promote positive change in behavior in order to have better relationships. Determine which questions are most effective for future use through group work and peer feedback. Create a brief basic questionnaire to use as a self-evaluation tool for personal and professional use. Now, together, we are going to discuss choice theory as it relates to behavior. We're going to review a list of questions used to encourage change. We're going to create a modified list of five or six questions. We're going to evaluate the questions through group work to gain insight and draw from your peers. We're going to reflect on question effectiveness and appropriate use of choice theory. And then we're going to create a self-evaluation questionnaire for personal and professional use. Now, you might be saying, why? Why do I need this? Well, let's stop and think about the world that we live in, full of millions of people, all running around, different shapes, sizes, colors, genders, uh, ethnicities. Uh, they're all running around uh, trying to live their life. Uh, I kind of envision it as a um, kind of a bumper car situation. You know, we're running into each other, we're stepping on each other's toes, some of us are knocking other people down, some of us aren't even in the game whatsoever. And why are we doing this? We are trying to fulfill basic needs. Survival, belonging, power, freedom, and fun. Now, in doing this, um, it, 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 and if our needs are not being met, then that's what causes the conflict, okay, in our relationships. Um, and there you have a bumper car that has obviously had a lot of conflict. Poor car. <laughs> uh, so we are going to try to, I'm going to try to give you a tool to use that might be useful in the future to prevent conflict in those you encounter, as well as our clients. Now how am I going to do that? Well first of all, let's take a look. This is uh, uh, William Blasser. He developed reality therapy choice theory. His belief is that behavior is a choice, and it is. Whether we choose bad behavior or good behavior, it's our choice, okay? And he found that by taking responsibility for choices, a person has the power to change the outcome. It kind of makes sense if you stop and think about it. Now, um, the process behind choice theory. Now this is kind of, I, I really love this because it is kind of a common sense approach. Uh, which I know all of you are uh, full of common sense. I know you. The only person whose behavior we can control is our own, and that makes perfect sense. All long-lasting psychological problems are relationship problems. Now, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, and, uh, but it, it got you when you stop and think about it. Now, the problem relationship is always part of our present life, the here and now. We can only satisfy our basic needs right now and plan to continue satisfying them in the future. What's in the past is in the past. All behavior is chosen, but we only have direct control over the acting and thinking components. Therefore, change the acting and thinking, change the behavior. That's kind of it in a nutshell. Now, uh, here's a scenario that we will use for the remainder of the class if you so desire, but this is kind of a, a basic scenario where we have a, a kind of a conversation, so to speak, on the left there. <laughs> I don't know what you'd call it that. But you can see that her desired outcome is that picture in the bubble. Mm. Now, is her behavior going to achieve her desired outcome? No. And why not? Why, why? Because it looks like an angry exchange, not a relationship exchange. Not a relationship exchange, it's an angry yeah. relationship. It yeah. Like anger. Very good, very good, okay. Now, using reality, th 
therapy choice theory. You might want to ask the woman in the previous scenario, what do you want? What are you trying to achieve? What are you currently doing to get it? Is what you are doing helping you to get what you want? And I like, I like the doctor, it's kind of like the Dr. Phil thing, and this is one of my favorites, how's it working for you? Yeah, yeah, everybody can relate to Dr. Phil's comment, because it's so apropos. And what could you do different? So these are the basic uh, questions that you would ask uh, a client, or even yourself, uh, when you're addressing a uh, conflict, uh, conflicting relationship. Now, looking at these questions, what do you think you, as a counselor, are trying to get from the client when you're asked to presenting these questions. Can you think of why? Yeah, Sybil. Well, my one thought was that you want them to take responsibility for, mm -hmm. their, for their own feelings and their, mm -hmm. and their own accomplishments in the relationship. Right, you know? right. And that goes back to what we discussed right. earlier with mm -hmm. the uh, that's part of what reality therapy is all about, mm -hmm. is taking responsibility. Very good. Now, and, and what, what, we're, uh, what we're trying to accomplish is so that this can end up like this. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, I am a firm believer as a Christian counselor that any therapy or any approach I take uh, must align with biblical principles. Um, number one, that's your number one authority. You can't beat that authority, biblical principle. Also, clients um, would see the credibility in the therapy that you use if you're able to give biblical principles as your foundation. Now, reality therapy, I, I love when I was researching more about it, is it turns out reality therapy is the number one therapy that contributes the most to Christian counseling. There's, uh, and which I think is fantastic, and I'm probably why I've been drawn to it um, over the years through my education uh, without realizing it. God was leading me. Because, take a look at the principles of, the biblical principles and the principles of reality therapy. You're looking at the right and wrong behavior. Sin versus not sinning. The reality of the here and now, dealing with uh, what is present and in front of you. And my, my favorite is the choice, the choices that we can change and that we make. And that has to do with the gift of free will from God. Taking responsibility, owning our actions and our words. You know, taking responsibility for us. And as Christians, we should be doing this on a daily basis. And then, of course, the main one, agape love, is our treatment and care for others. And I know all of you are very caring women. <laughs> Yay. That was clappy in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> it sounded like a storm coming yeah. in. I didn't do the volume, but uh, that was clapping. And these are the references I used. And if any of you are, for, are interested in pursuing more about the reality therapy, that William Glasser Institute, uh, the website there, you can just Google it. But this is where I got a lot of the information and things that we're going to be using. Um, and it's really informative and uh, just a good place to start. Now. What we're going to do now, and these are the reference points that I'm going to leave this up here for you all to refer to as we proceed with the next step, which the next step is, drum roll please, I should have added that. Thank you. Oh, I knew it. See? I knew it. <laughs> you all did that just like you had practiced it. Uh, all right. Here is a list of 26 questions. Now, I got these questions from that website, uh, William Blood, the Glasser Institute. So they are uh, credible questions. These are the questions that the Institute uses uh, in different situations to promote what they advocate as far as the choice theory. Um, so what we're going to do, you're going to look at these 26 questions. I'm going to give you some time to do it. Um, and, and I want you to read them over and just kind of get familiar. And then I want you to pull five or six questions from these. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to just kind of get a baseline self-evaluation tool. I'm going to let you take these home with you so later on you can refer back to them, you can tweak them, you can use them, because sometimes, the, as you will discover, when you read these questions, they can be situational. Some of these questions would not apply to every encounter. 
uh, and you'll see more as you as I let you get familiar with them. But I do want you to pull five or six questions from it, and then we're going to, after you've done that, I'll give you a couple minutes, then we're going to test the effectiveness of your selections through group work. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. You may go ahead. If you have any questions. This slide that's on uh, up here is a uh, kind of a base uh, reference for what you're trying to, to uh, accomplish through your selection of your questions. And you may even have a personal scenario in mind, somebody you're having conflict with. Uh, pull out some questions that might help you. You've, you've got a lot of education behind you, a lot of smarts, so a lot of uh, professional experience. So. Uh, if any of these strike a chord, you may want to pursue it because we're going to do a little bit of group work here in a minute where you can put it to good use. I'll give you about another 30 seconds, 45 seconds. But if you're not done, just and you will not be tested on this. Somebody asked earlier. <laughs> so don't panic. I'm picking too many. I'm that's okay. <laughs> no, that's okay, Sybil. I'm glad. I, I really am. Um, because you're going to have plenty of time. And if you would like to, uh, to expand a little bit, that's perfectly all right. Um, you're not locked into mm -hmm. any specific framework here. I would have loved these questions with this My Last Care of the Secret. That's why I said I thought this was going to be very appropriate for future Absolutely. personal mm -hmm. use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Now, let's see where I'm going with this. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is you're going to break into um, uh, break into groups of two. So you okay. two. Um, and if you if two of you would like to move to another table, either the one back there, the one right there, because what you're going to be doing, one of when you break into groups, I'm going to give you plenty of time for this. One of you will start as the counselor, the other one will be the client, presenting with a problem. Now you could, have, you could use that scenario if you have a personal relationship in mind. You don't have to go into detail, it's personal. Um, so, but you can think about that relationship at, when you are the uh, client and when you're answering. Now the counselor, you're going to ask these questions that you've selected um, to get responses from your clients to see how effective these questions are, the ones that you have selected. And don't panic, if you'd like to change it up later, we're gonna have time for that. Uh, and then, uh, halfway through the time allotment, and I'll give you a heads up, we're gonna switch roles. The clients will now be the counselors, the counselors will now be the clients, and you will use those questions uh, that you've selected. 
and a relationship. The uh, clients keep a relationship in your mind. And if you have perfect relationships in a perfect world, then you can use the scenario, of course, that's always the, the gentleman, and you can be the woman, of course, in the scenario. So now, do we have any questions before we start? Okay, and if you feel like you're gonna be interrupting, yes. you're more than welcome to, well, um, to yeah, maybe just move, if you wanna move, yeah. And I'm gonna give you plenty of time. I will also give you a 30 second heads up when we're going to, uh, Switch roles. So one of you start as the counselor, the other one be the client. Was there a time when the relationship was better? Okay, I'm going to give you about another 30, 45 seconds, and then we're going to switch roles. gave you an idea. Now what I'd like you to do is switch roles. Whoever was the counselor will now be the client. Who was the client will now be the counselor. And um, clients, you will ask, or counselors, you will ask your set of questions to the client as they have a relationship scenario in their mind. And I'll give you a couple of minutes to proceed with that. So go right ahead.
question. I mean, I thought it was disconnected, but I'm really not. So I was back there in my back of my mind, because I think about all the things. We did all the, the good things that we did, but then I think about all the bad things that we did. So I'm trying to disconnect, I guess. But it's tangled up with the business stuff, so I can't totally another 30, 45 seconds to wrap up this scenario. having some real sessions going on here. This is pretty good. Nice. Stay where you are right now. Because right now, I'm going to give you maybe two minutes. I want you to talk to each other as peers. Use your, use your um, professional experience, your knowledge. Uh, you all come with different uh, levels of that um, in your background. Discuss the effectiveness of the questions as you felt. Discuss it with each other. Um, give each other feedback on how the other might improve or how great they were. Um, and uh, just kind of a banner back and forth and uh, share your, what you got from, from your little experience there. And I'll give you about uh, two minutes to do that. another 30, 45 seconds. Conversations going on. I heard a lot of good pure fake feedback. Yes, if y'all want to come back in and join the, the main group. We're going to wrap this up now in the remaining three or four minutes. Um, uh, 
uh, what I want to hear from you is uh, how did you feel about the exercise? Did it help? Uh, do you think this is something you're going to be able to use in the future? Um, give me some, give, I want to hear some feedback. Absolutely. I think it was so good just to the personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think these questions were forward enough, but gentle enough to, we're not pointing the finger at them, mm -hmm. we're just asking the questions to mm -hmm. get their mind thinking. And um, it really does make you think. It really does kind of turn it back to you mm -hmm. to, um, there's just, there were really great questions. Good, I'm glad, and you brought up a good point, the gentleness, because we don't want to blame. We don't want to point fingers, who are we to do? And that's not what we're about, and you mean. Right. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so good, good uh, response. Sybil, what, what did you? Well, my, the, the first one that jumped out at me is, can you remember a time when this relationship was better? That's such mm -hmm. a strong basis. And then what changed? Good. That's such a strong basis because yeah. it was the relationship good, and when it was good, what was different, mm -hmm. and what okay. has changed. Right. That, right. that was my first one. So that, was, that was your pivot. Yes, yeah, was, yes. good, yes. good, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you, what do you want from mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. is a really good okay. Well, what do I want? You yeah. know, it yeah. kind of forces you into that place where you think about what am I looking for? What am I trying to do? Do mm -hmm. I need, and, and makes you think, am I really, what do I want from them is for them to change, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which meant right. you, we don't have that control, so it's right. going lead you down there. And right. I wonder how many of them really know what they want. They don't think past just the problem, mm -hmm. you know, what do they really want. And Annette, so. um, did anything stand out for you, Sue? The first one, too, the what do you want from mm -hmm. them, that kind of sets the whole tone, because exactly. if you don't know what you're looking for in the outcome, then you don't know what your what the goal is. Yeah, what yeah, the goal is. yeah. You don't know where you're going. And another thing too, I think is interesting um, is to keep in mind that everything basically. Uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can get back to it. Um, yeah, everything that we do basically is trying to get one of these five needs met. So that's another kind of another point you may want to uh, refer back to or think about when you are encountering or uh, in a counseling situation. Um, what need is not being met? Mm -hmm. And now, to, uh, my final question about this would be: uh, Keep in mind, um, who might this not work on? Uh, what? Because you know what we're going to do or what you're going to do is when a client presents with an issue, you're going to use your professional experience. Uh, is reality therapy warranted? Is a self-evaluation tool going to be uh, effective? Uh, who might not benefit from this type of therapy? Can you think mm -hmm. of something or a situation? Think of where we live and what a melting pot Orlando is. Uh, we're going to encounter all types of people. Can you think of a situation that somebody might, or a gender, hint, hint, 